what I want to talk about today is somewhat get across that although you know the I work for Avis Budget Group, you know the traditional brand that we are rethinking how we act and how we look um, in the world today. So I have this slide up here not to talk about who we are as a company, but really to um, connect the dots between infrastructure that we have in our business today and the possibilities with IoT and what can be the possibilities tomorrow and how do we participate. So we have a vast network, we have lots of employees, we have lots of vehicles that move around, and we have an opportunity to accelerate and participate with other partners in IoT to advance the agenda. This here is a market map, uh, compliments of KPMG, doing some work with them to try and understand both the Australian and New Zealand landscape and how mobility is changing. And mobility can be defined in many, many different ways. So when I take a look around and I think about um, my company, um, we're not just traditional car rental. We are looking at all aspects of mobility and who do we partner with and engage with so that we can bring um, personal transportation, uh, moving someone, a person, or a thing from point A to point B, either by having the customer drive themselves, by having a driver drive them, or through an autonomous car, of course. And so if I would have put up this slide last year or a year and a half ago when I arrived in Australia, um, I am sure there wouldn't have been nearly as many uh, brands on this slide. And I'm sure if this was done two months ago, there would be equally as many that would be added to it. But really remarkable. So whether you're talking about ride share, car share, bike share, transportation, we also have smart parking um, and other modes of transportation as well as autonomous vehicles, fleet management as a service, software as a service, and the list goes on and on and on. And it's not just startups and it's not just big companies. And it's government too, right? So the question is how do we all work together to make sure we bring smart cities to life? I'd like to talk for a moment a little bit about how we see um, transportation in the future. And so this is all around how do we migrate today um, to tomorrow of autonomous vehicles. And, and you know acronyms are flying around all over the place. Everybody this morning, many people were talking about how transportation is changing. Um, how we see it in the future is really all around you know, making a case. Connected, autonomous, uh, shared, and electric. So this notion of as we move to autonomous cars, why does somebody have to actually own a car anymore? And we know the statistics around car ownership as we look into the future. I'm going to spend a couple of minutes on each one of these um, just to make a brief point um, so that we can foster uh, questions later on. So connected car, I actually, there were some statistics earlier this morning on how the market in connected car is growing. Our statistics are vastly different. Um, so this is, this you see up here, um, growing you know, at a kegger of 32% um, over the next 10 years. Whether it's 32% or 50%, um, there are many people getting into this space, creating um, new ways to connect using the vehicle as a connection point uh, for the Internet of Things. And for what, right? What does it do? There's things in the car that can happen, but there are things that will help enable cities to become more smart as well. So we'll use, them, we'll use the connectivity for safety features. We'll use the connectivity to manage the car better. Uh, we'll use the uh, connectivity for communication tools, collaboration um, and communication uh, from car to car or car to uh, sidewalk, et cetera. So many possibilities as we go, and it's not just um, in the US and it's not just in, Australia, or in Europe and it's not just in Asia, it's, it's right here in Australia as well. So then uh, a little bit about autonomous. Everybody's talking about autonomous, so I probably don't have to talk too much about this, um, but it certainly is a place that we are working um, to make sure our company is participating in this going forward. So this notion of someone will build the car, but there also has to be companies that actually operate the vehicles as well. So uh, a couple of months ago, we announced that we're working with Waymo and Phoenix um, to operate their 500 car test um, and understand their user experience on what the users are feeling when they're sitting in the cars and what needs to change as a result. Um, 
lots of statistics around you know, the growth of autonomous cars. There's level one to level five. Who knows how many cars will be on the road, at what level, at what time. We just know it's growing faster and faster as, uh, as we go through the year. And then sharing. So I've developed a passion for the sharing economy uh, when I took over Zipcar about three, years, three and a half years ago, four years ago, actually. Um, I didn't know much about it when I took over. I'm a 20-year a, a person at Avis, and uh, we were working in the UK, and they asked me to go run Zipcar. And that's where I developed a passion in learning what's going on in and around cities as we make cities wonderful places to live, work, and play. But as they become wonderful places to live, work, and play, they're very crowded, they're very congested, we have infrastructure problems, um, which causes a problem for both people getting around as well as the environment. So as we move into a world of autonomy, we also believe if somebody has, an auto if there, we have autonomous cars, what is the point of owning one? If you have the convenience of a car coming to you, you order it through your smartphone or it's automatically programmed and it knows where to take, where's, where to take you, why do you need to own one? And this car will drive and get the next member, the next customer as close to you as possible, so it will be very efficient. So sharing. And electric. So we haven't heard much about electric this morning. Um, in Australia, I would say, doesn't talk enough about electrifying vehicles. Um, I hear it in many other countries around the world. Um, I do believe Australia will, um, once, once the, uh, we put a little more time into it, likely will catch up. But this is something that we're absolutely focused on because we do believe that um, a world with electric vehicles is, is not far around the corner as well. So you can see the growth here and the innovation and the customer experience that we have to understand in order to be ready for this. So smart cities, that's why we're here, growing all, growing all around the world. I don't know one city, small, medium, or large, that's not trying to be the best smart city in the world participating in many events around the world, looking for grants, collaboration, and participation between public and private sector, um, which is creating new opportunities, new economies, and new industries um, for all of us. Many of you are participating in that, if not all of you are participating in that today. So what a wonderful place to be. But what does that mean? That means we have to start to rethink everything, right? So I'll start with curbs. Um, if we have autonomous cars that are driving around and they drive in, in, you know, during peak periods, they come into the middle of the city and they move people around efficiently, um, they certainly don't have to park on the street anymore. We can send them out to a place that's less congested further away from the city. So that gives us lots of room in the city to do with what we will. What are we going to do with that extra space? Airports. Imagine a world where when you land on your flight, you, get a, you have a note that your autonomous car is driving up and it can read as you come through the baggage claim that, that you know, through IoT and technology that you're coming through and it's at the curbside exactly when you are and it picks you up and you go. How nice and efficient would that be? Airports have to rethink what they're doing and how they're planning. Parking garages. Parking garages, people are building parking garages today, especially in cities, and do we need them tomorrow? So I do know that there are architects in place who are actually building and designing parking garages today that will be transformed into either retail or residential um, spaces um, in the future. So we've got to rethink how we're doing that. And then fleet. Um, what sort of fleet do we need tomorrow? I was having a conversation um, with our organization in Singapore. And we're thinking about uh, electrifying um, Singapore in the future. And if we electrify Singapore in the future, why are we, we buying com combustion engine cars today? So we have to rethink our fleet. And people who own fleets to deliver packages, to deliver goods, when the Amazons and the home deliveries of the world come, how are we going to deal with that? Cities need to rethink everything and transit. Somebody mentioned earlier personal transit or actually um, uh, uh, crowdsourced transit on demand. So why do you have to walk to a subway station? Why do you have to walk to a bus? Can you just order it? Um, it crowdsources the data and it comes to you and drops you, you know, a block or a half a block or right in front of the door you need to go to. That's what we need to be thinking about. And I know there is a lot of microtransit tests going on around the world, especially in Europe, 
and in the US. So we have to rethink everything, which somebody mentioned earlier, we are now in the middle of a revolution. The CEO of GM a couple of years, two years ago said, um, we will see more change in our, in our world of transportation automotive industry um, in the next five years than we've seen in the last hundred years. And guess what, right here. And we're all a part of it. It's fun and exciting. Um, I look forward to hearing to the rest of the panelists on uh, how we're going to make cities smart. Thank you. Thank you.